Well, hello everyone and welcome to Pragmac. I wanted to talk about a shift in technology, a shift in the way that we consume content, and that of course is the rise of streaming services and streaming video. From the more traditional ways of enjoying media, which was through cable packages or through theaters, and now you see a big shift, the delivery method that is on the rise, that is ever growing, streaming. Due to its convenience, your ability to watch what you want, when you want, around your schedule, the fact that you can binge shows and binge watch entire seasons and let's not forget the ability to choose your own snack and choose what you want to eat while watching a movie or a show. Streaming provides great content and it provides it in a convenient way. It seems that streaming is entering or perhaps has already entered the golden era, meaning the quality of content available on these streaming services is either matching or in some cases outmatching much of the content that was only available in theater. A case in point would be Disney's The Mandalorian, which which is available only on their streaming service, Disney+, Plus, and it's part of that larger Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian shows just how good production can be, and in this case, the product is actually better than, let's say, Solo, a film which was not received well at the time it came into theater. Contrasting these two, you can see how a streaming service can deliver on a big-budget, well-produced, well-written show that in this case outcompetes a theatrical release. In this golden era, there is one one downside. All the choice and quality produced shows and movies, they come in a fragmented world. And it does seem very familiar from what cable turned into a long time ago. Before we all cut the cord and went to streaming, we were held in a status quo model, and that was the cable model. And somewhere along the line, streaming has become cable. Let's stop and take a moment on what I mean. In an earlier time, television was delivered via a cable. There were channels that provided different content. However, as a customer, you did not get to choose the individual channels. Rather, you would pick a channel tier. You would pick a group of channels that you best identified with and said, hey, this is the majority of what I want to watch. And thus, everyone paid for channels that they never really watched. That was the biggest problem. That was the crux and the motivation of the Cut the Cord movement. It was to get away from paying for content that we were never intending to watch, those channels that would play content we were not interested in, yet it was there on our television every day. Back at this time, Netflix came and said, we can stream directly to you and just pay us a monthly amount. Fast forward to today and there are a lot of streaming services, really too many to name. I'm going to name the ones that most will be able to identify with. Of course, the old school, the beginning of it all, Netflix. Then you have Disney, Plus, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, Hulu, CBS All Access, something called Peacock, and yeah, I, th I think Apple, Apple has a streaming service as well. So what is the big problem? What's wrong with all this choice? It's awesome, you say. Well, it could be, but the way that things have developed, that's not the reality. The reality is no one has enough time to watch all the content out there. And if you were to subscribe to a few of these products, you could easily start adding up costs and realize that you're paying for content you aren't going to watch. Let's take for example, you subscribe to Netflix because there was a show you enjoyed watching there. You're big on HBO shows, so of course you got the HBO Max, and you need to watch The Mandalorian, so you add in Disney+. Plus. Well, that's $14 for Netflix, $15 for HBO Max, and Disney+, Plus is another $7. Quickly, we've gone into almost $40 territory. We've got three subscription services, which doesn't even cover off the majority of the list, and we have much more content than we are intending to consume. And the reason we need to subscribe to three of these services and not one is because the content is exclusive. You see, HBO is going to be the only one where you can watch Game of Thrones. Netflix is going to be the only place you can watch the new season of Stranger Things. Now, depending on the content you want to consume, you are now driven to subscribe to a particular service. The fragmentation of content, that is the outcome of having exclusive rights to films and shows. 
show. And those exclusive rights, they secure anchor shows, shows that draw in new subscribers, a new subscriber base, and a new revenue base for these companies. Take, for example, the very recent purchase of the Wonder Woman 1984 rights by HBO Max. They've purchased the rights to stream the movie at the same time that it's going to be in theater. And Wonder Woman 1984 is a very expensive movie. Under normal circumstances, I don't think that this would be made available to any streaming services. HBO Max has spent a lot of money up front, and the reason they've done that is to draw in a new subscriber base. The idea being that you subscribe to watch Wonder Woman, there's a few suggestions before and after the movie, you get hooked on a new show, and before you know it, 30 days has passed, and you are on the month-to-month -month wheel of subscription. You add up a few exclusive shows, a few big movies, and you're easily subscribing to two or more of these services, and costs are being driven up. In short, although these streaming services have helped a great deal and provided a lot of choice to viewers, they've also set up walls. Walls which force consumers to subscribe to several services depending on the content they want to consume, spending more than they need to for things they'll never watch. And that leaves some asking why all of these services can't be bundled up into a single package, a single package with a single monthly rate. Maybe a package that could organize all this content and bring down the walls. Seeing how we're paying for content we'll never watch, why not just bundle it all and make everything simpler? That is essentially the past we left behind and the problem we set out to solve. And somehow we're here again. Thank you everybody. Thank you for listening to my thoughts. Please let me know what you think the future of streaming has in store for us. Do I have it all wrong? Do you think the future is having subscription bundles that look a lot like cable? Or do you think there's a different solution to this problem? Please leave a comment down below. And thank you again from Pragmax.